Hi everyone, today we are looking at an ink from Pen BBS. Very quick look at this ink today. Now, Pen BBS uh, launched onto the international scene pretty strongly this year with uh, the pens that they produce, uh, things like the 308 and the 309, uh, and of course, more recently, the 456 and the uh, 469. Uh, both having very interesting uh, either the vacuumatic filling system or the double-ended nib pen which is a nice little gimmick uh, and I think with the number six nibs being interchangeable the double-ended pen could be could be very handy if you wanted to have two different nibs two different inks uh, you could get a couple of uh, Yovo nibs or Schmidt or Bock or any of those Knox for instance uh, and swap them out and it's a very cool system um, Today we're looking at this ink, which is number 283, which is Petra, uh, which is an interesting sort of burgundy, maroni, I suppose magenta -y sort of colour ink. Uh, I think it's really pretty, uh, and I think it's... I'm really enjoying looking at the Pen BBS inks I've been lucky enough to get my hands on recently. The inks aren't as easy to come by. There's a few retailers who are starting to stock them, uh, but... I think they'll become more and more popular as the pen company continues to thrive as it is. So, comes in this nice sort of cardboard box, um, and I love these bottles. They are a tall bottle, they're a wide bottle, nice octagonal shape, they are super sturdy, the cap is great, um, you know, it's, you can sort of see, get a sense of that colour there already. I really like them, uh, you know, just close up just again for a quick second. The labels are nothing sort of fancy, they're sort of printed and stuck on, uh, but they give a nice sort of, this is like Petra uh, there. Uh, and yeah, 60 odd mils of ink, good value, not too badly priced, even to get them from China to Australia. So let's do a quick swab of this ink, and uh, we'll see what it looks like on the page. So that's an unsaturated sort of colour and then a bit more saturation there on the second cross and you can see that sort of lovely sort of reddy purple uh, almost sort of browny pink sort of colour coming through it's quite a unique colour I really quite like this ink these are sort of more traditional inks in the sense that they are um, not high sheening or sh uh, shimmy or anything like that they're just really good quality coloured inks Pen BBS do make some shimmer inks uh, and no doubt that they make some shading inks, but this is one of the more traditional line inks. Now I have it here in my Twisby Eco. What we're gonna do is we're gonna write on it just on a range of paper uh, and see how it performs. So we have the pen, BBS number 283, I think I said it was, which is Petra. The, you can see this is a lovely sort of color ink and actually performs very nicely uh, in the pen. Uh, in fact, you, you get a more saturated sense of the ink in this pen. Yes, this is a broad nib and you know, it's going to lay down a lovely amount of ink, uh, but it does look great sort of on this rodeo paper. Uh, it's you know, wet enough, it's good. So, and looking at the performance of it here, I can't see any feathering or spread. You can see a little bit of shading, which is rather lovely. Uh, you can see some shading sort of around the, the tops of the, the numbers there and uh, on the top of the P there, it's a little bit lighter. So you do get some nice sort of highlights sort of coming through in the ink. Let's see it on the reverse side now because that'll give us another sense of what it does. And as you can see, there's no bleeding at all, even from the swab. This is rhodia paper, so it, it's expected to perform well. Let's try it on a couple of other papers while we're here. So we have it now. We have a my 2018 uh, Hobonichi Weeks, which uh, is Tomo River paper. Uh, so let's try it here. We got pen B B S. Um, I'll just say Petra, just for the sake of space and everything. Give it a second, a bit of put down a bit of an ink there. You can see it, it's taking longer to dry on this Tomo River paper, which is to be expected. It's sort of, you know, it's very resistant paper, which makes it beautiful for fountain pens because you don't get that bleeding or anything. Uh, and you can see the qualities of the ink. Now, if we look at that, once again, it's beautiful. It performs really, really well there. And on the reverse, actually, there's a couple of tiny spots of bleed there. Uh, but that's where I put down, you know, quite a substantial amount uh, of 
ink. Uh, and you know, you don't expect to see that, but you can. Uh, but for, in the, for the most part, out of a broad nib here, it's performed pretty well. Let's look at it on some lower end paper now. And uh, here I have uh, just some regular 80 GSM copy paper. So this is 80 GSM copy paper. I might just get a little piece of plastic, just in case. This is the pen BBS number 283 Petra. Uh, it is absorbing into this paper a bit more. It's darker than the uh, Rhodia. It do it's not as vibrant a colour uh, and it is a little bit sort of more dull, but it still performs reasonably well. There are a couple of little spots with some slight feathering, um, but not too much really. Around the P there of Pen BBS, there's a little bit of feathering as well. Uh, and on the reverse, we see a tiny bit of bleed occasionally. Um, coming out where the ink sort of pulls a little bit in the writing, but generally that's pretty well behaved. Let's go down the scale again and let's hit it onto some student note paper. This is just a student lecture pad uh, made by Spyrex. Um, Yeah, it's spreading, it's feathering, it's definitely absorbing into the paper quicker, as to be uh, expected. You can see, I'm trying to get that into the light as well, you can see the feathering and how it has uh, spread. There's not as much shading on this as there were on the other papers, so it's, a, it's sort of a more uniform, dull colour. And if we look at the reverse, yeah, we have a considerable amount more uh, bleed happening there. So obviously this is not fountain pen friendly paper uh, and the performance shows that. Here we have a Kunisawa uh, notebook. Um, I thought I'd just try it out in here as well. This is supposed to be fountain pen friendly paper. It is Japanese paper. It's quite um, expensive really. Uh, it's a luxury sort of uh, book. Uh, So this is a Kunisawa, a Kunisawa notebook. Um, yeah, once again, this pa I, I don't consider this paper to be overly fountain pen friendly. It does play tricks on ink. It does, it performs better with certain inks than others. This looks okay on it. It's, it's still getting some shading and some of those sort of nice properties of the ink, but it is absorbing and there is a tiny bit uh, of feathering and spread occasionally. Not a lot, um, but you can see, for instance, there, there's a little bit of feathering happening. Uh, and it just doesn't look as nice. I think this ink does work particularly well on Rodeo and Tonga River. Uh, there's a little bit of bleed there as well. Not a lot, but enough to make it um, probably not the most friendly on that paper. So I think looking at it on true fountain pen friendly paper like the Rodia here, like the Tomo River uh, here in the Hobonichi Weeks book, you get a nice sense of that ink. It's a lovely sort of rich, you know, sort of burgundy magenta sort of colour. I quite like it. I do like the colour. Uh, I think I'd be careful. I think in a, once again, like some of the other inks I've been looking at in a, in a finer nib, uh, you might not get the saturation that you get from this, but I think it'd be safer on a lot of other paper. Uh, yeah, so this was the Pen, uh, Pen BBS Petra ink number 283. Uh, they're not easy to find, but if you find them, give them a try. I think uh, they're, they're interesting inks, and some of the ones I've got are more interesting than others, and I'm hoping to get a few more as well. So, Pen BBS Petra. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. Uh, and please feel free to get in touch uh, on Instagram or Twitter where you can find me at, at the underscore offstage underscore me. I'd love to see what you're up to over there. 
please get in touch if there are products you think I should be looking at or if there is a way you'd like to support this channel and uh, we can see what you can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you later.